What's going on guys, Victor here. I'm with my good buddy, Ricky. How you guys doing? From Florida Fishing Channel. You guys might recognize him. This is literally the permit king of the Florida Keys. Last night he sent me a picture and he's like, dude, you wanna go catch tilapia? And I'm like, heck yeah, I've never done that before. I'm also new on tilapia fishing. This is, actually that guy over there, he's the one that showed me how to fish for tilapia. I'm, I'm a saltwater guy, like kind of like you. And but you know, he showed me the catch that he did like a couple weeks ago and he had a full string. I said, you know what, bro, I never done it. I wanted to do it. So I came last week and bro, no joke, the, the bite was insane. It literally, you just casting one after the other, boom, boom, boom. So we're out here. We didn't record the first half of the day because it kind of started out slow. It's been raining like crazy, but check this out. We already got a pretty decent little bucket of tilapia. So we're gonna walk you guys through the whole thing. Ricky, what you got? And we release two real nice ones. The two biggest ones we released by mistake. The first one that I got was a monster tilapia and I, I lost it right there and you got a big one too and you yeah. lost it over there too. Right so right. we got a regular small hook, I believe this is about size three or four. We're gonna use a piece of worm. Now the whole worm, If you can use the whole worm but you don't have to. Just a little piece like this, just go with the whole hook, a little sinker for you to be able to, to cast far because they're not too close. Of course, the little barber. That's it. That's, That's your it. rig. Let's see. Because the tilapia are down a little bit. So you put a weight on there and it makes it down. And your bobber is really just an indicator so you can kind of see. Right. I got to show Ricky how it's done. You ready? Yeah. We'll set the camera here. We'll see who gets one first. How about that? All right, let's do it. You know, I'm going to get my decent size. Medium. So he showed you this spot, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Victor, you just lost. Uh, tilapia here, yeah, but it's not nice. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Woo, look at this. See, that's a good size tilapia right there. It is, yeah. That's, and this is not a big one. There are some like real big, like no, no joke, uh, like about twice this big. Twice this big, like real monsters. I hope we can catch one of those. When they get really, really big, they're like white and uh, and the chest is red. It might be a different type of tilapia. I have no idea, to be honest. But it's same shape, it's just different color. What? Look big at that. one? Look at that. Oh! Look at that. I tell you. My man Lazardo. I tell you. I tell you. It's a good tilapia. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice size tilapia. Oh, see, this one's a lot more red already. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Lazardo smoking us on this side all by himself. Ricky, you see this? His cooler is twice as full as our bucket, and he's one guy. <laughs> How many he got? He's got one, two, three, seven. Wow. Good job. We don't have seven between me and you. <laughs> <laughs> we might have what? Yeah, we're about the same. Yeah. So we started out on this little stretch of the lake and last time Ricky was here, he smoked them. I'm talking about like 40 on a stringer, but he's also fished the other side. And he says this is like the slowest spice it's ever been here. So we're gonna go ahead and drive on over to the other side because I don't know, I, I'm not a tilapia guy, but I'm assuming all fish have tails. They gotta move sometimes. So you just gotta find them where they are on the bank. And they're almost always in big schools at least whenever i've seen him freshwater fishing so let's try to find the school so we switched over to this side of the lake and it is producing good we got the two biggest tilapia of the day in the bucket so far got a light drizzle so had to put the camera gears away but got the gopro out let's show you guys how easy this is there you go uh, ricky's already on at least i don't think it's a tilapia Oh yeah, it is a tilapia. It is a tilapia. Yeah. A nice one too. Not bad. There it is. There's the tilapia. There it, there it is. You know when your bobber goes under a good amount, those tilapia, they'll usually just take the bobber straight down. It's not peck, peck, peck. Oh, no. yeah, you to do that. Uh, <laughs> well, what do I know? It's a mine cichlid. So this is another invasive species. So Florida's freshwater systems are home to thousands, well, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of invasive species, one of which is the mine cichlid. Kind of look like a little mangrove snapper of the freshwater, but 
These things are everywhere, canals, lakes. So Ricky just made a good point, what he was saying. Here's another main cichlid. He kills them because they're invasive, they're not supposed to be here, and FWC actually encourages it. He's not gonna eat it, but he's not gonna let it go. I just let mine go, I don't... Sometimes you, you I kill them, so... Like killing the fish. Yeah, I... But it's too many over here, bro. They get, they're taking over, so that's why I'm, I, I don't feel right killing the fish. I don't want to kill a fish. Right now. But it's the right thing to do right now because they're overpopulating it. They're getting every, it's too many. It's, yep. we, we're getting too many of those smiling cichlids and those flower horns and stuff like that. They, too many cichlids over here. But he made a good point. He goes, off camera, you guys didn't hear. He goes, if you kill it, you're going to get all the people saying, why did you kill it if you're not going to eat it? And then if you release it, you're going to get all the people saying, why'd you release it if it's invasive and you know it? Yeah. There's two sides to the story, and it doesn't matter which side you're on. You're never going to please 100% of the people 100% of the time. It's just the way it is. Look at all that blue, like pink, reddish. Yeah, that's an aquarium fish. It is. That's a cichlid. It's a beautiful fish. I'm not quite sure what that one is. Uh, kind of looks like a flower horn, but you guys comment below if you know what it is. Not too colorful, pretty dark. I don't know if it's because of the water that it's living in, but neat fish. Hooked? Yeah, that's, that's the labia, that's the labia, that's the labia. Yeah. I can see that head shake. Those head shakes. Yeah. When you hook a tilapia, they pull the bobber straight under. A mine cichlid, what a mine cichlid will do is he'll kind of run down into the side into the bank. Tilapia kind of swim at you, but like pulling backwards if you know what I mean. Like they'll come up and shake their head. It's pretty textbook every single time you catch one. Super pretty fish too, just a ton of colors and just stripes on them. Look at this dorsal fin, it's massive too. Big tilapia. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what they do, they come up they always come up to the surface like that. Look at how big this one is. Nice one. Everyone's got a little bit different color too. Some are real light, got more red in them. Some are super dark. So the thing with these fish too is they mouth brood. I believe that's the correct term. The males will actually go and make a nest, like a perfect circle. They'll scoop it out with their mouth and then they'll go out to the deep, get a female, court a female, bring her back to the nest or the female will hold the young in its mouth until I guess they're old enough or big enough to be out on their own, but pretty neat. I mean, it's just one after another after another. <laughs> and yes, we are gonna be eating them. Ricky, uh, Ricky knows a lot of people that like to eat fish, so he's gonna take some. I'm gonna take some for a catch and cook. Lizardo's gonna take some, make some ceviche. I'm gonna give some away. Yeah. So tilapia are invasive to Florida as well, so we really shouldn't be releasing them to the wild anyway. So they're a good protein source. They're probably like the most popular fish worldwide. Bobber, leader, worm. Let's see how long it takes. The bite is on fire now. We've noticed that throughout the day, it goes in spurts where it'll be on fire, then it'll be real slow. But let's see. Oh, 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 oh. oh. That's it. That's it. You got That's it. it. You got it. That's it. Well, that take 15 seconds, right? <laughs> 15 seconds. This place is on fire. Oh, look hey, at the size were... of that thing. That's a big monster one. Look at that. Ricky was not kidding when he said he had a good tilapia spot. Look at this. On fire, bro. I mean, they got a good amount of meat on them. Look at these. It's like comparable, I'd compare it to like a, for all my saltwater guys out there, you know me, I'm not a, I'm not a big freshwater guy, but that's like a, you know, 12, 13 inch yellowtail, meat wise I'd say. I never flayed one, but I'm assuming. Uh, about the same, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Beautiful fish. Look at how, how lit up this one is. Some of them were real dark. When we caught them on the other side, they were super dark. Nice. Taking our tilapia for a walk, <laughs> for a swim. <laughs> my pets. All thanks to this guy right here. If you haven't no already, subscribe. FL Fishing Channel, I'll have it linked below. Um, yeah, right there. The thing that I like about his channel is he does so much of what I grew up doing, the Keys Bridges. 
I am a peer rat at heart. That's that's where my roots lie. I started out fishing beers, piers, bridges, beaches, docks, all that kind of stuff way before the offshore days. The offshore stuff is still relatively new to me in the grand scheme of things, but Ricky does a lot of neat stuff. Kayak fishing, just like a super down to earth, humble dude. I like to switch things, you know, yeah. fresh water. You're going to see a, a fresh water video today and tomorrow you're going to see me off way offshore, deep dropping. I, change, I like to change things. I, I love all type of fishing, even bait fishing. You you give me a sabiki and you put me on, on the pier catching little sardines, I'll be happy doing that. I, I like every, every type of fishing. So guys, this is what we got. Woo! Like this <laughs> How long? How long it took us to take catch this? An, an hour and a about half. About an hour. Yeah, yeah, about an hour and a half. <laughs> hey. And big thank you, Lazardo. Well, I guess we'll, we'll see Lazardo a little bit later, but that's actually, this is his spot. See him waving? <laughs> you guys, I'm smiling ear to ear. We crushed the tilapia. I've never done so good tilapia fishing before. That was about our average size, like a pound, a pound and a half. But we did get some pretty big ones. These fish don't really have teeth. Uh, they're omnivorous, like I said, so they eat both vegetation and protein. We got the pile of filet started. So just so you guys know, we do actually eat what we catch. You guys see us catch and kill a lot of stuff, but guess what? We eat it and we give it away to people. I'd much rather give someone fresh fish than then have to go buy it at the grocery store. So we're gonna flay it real quick. Seven inch Dexter, flexible. Honestly, this is like my favorite knife for freshwater fish, peacock, bass, crappie. It's got the uh, flexibility you need for those softer fleshed freshwater fish and to really get around those big rib cages like a crappie and tilapia. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code LANDSHARK, I'll have it linked below. Right here behind the head, into the head meat. Down. Tip of our knife, and just follow the spine all the way down to the tail. Rest it back on the spine, come up. And you know, I don't think I can say I've ever eaten a tilapia before. I probably have in a restaurant or my grandma made it when I was a kid, but I certainly have never eaten a wild caught tilapia and I've never bought tilapia in my life. So I'm always trying something new. There we go. Do a quick skin on them. Okay. Not much of a bloodline, pretty small, nice white, firm, not mushy. It's pretty firm, so I'm very excited to try it. I think I'm gonna do a couple different recipes. I might do two, so I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. All right, tilapia time. I'm very impressed with the way these look. I've never really caught or dealt with tilapia. I've never ordered at a restaurant or anything, so I'm really excited to work with this fish. Very white, minimal bloodline, and firm. So I just have them on a sheet pan here. We're gonna throw them on the grill. We're gonna make a really good succotash, and we're also gonna do some tilapia ceviche to get both, you know, both kind of flavors of the fish. Um, this stuff right here, to all my Spanish-speaking people out there, I'm sure you guys know this, Sazon. Love this stuff. Really good for uh, braising like big cuts of uh, meat, but on fish, it's really good too. So that's the only way I'm seasoning these tilapia. We're gonna throw them on the grill. We're gonna just... There is a, a light coat of olive oil on both sides of this fish already. Man, this is some fragrant stuff. What do you think, Brooke? I think it looks beautiful already. It smells good too, doesn't it? Oh, gotta get in there. Okay, so the way I like to do my succotash, I like to start out with some kind of animal fat, whether it's bacon. This is Polish kielbasa. So it really flavors up the succotash and choose a high fatty protein to start as your base. Got some olive oil in the uh, Dutch oven. And we're just gonna put in our Polish kielbasa. We're just gonna brown it up a little bit and let some of that fat render from the kielbasa into the oven. So I just want my 
kielbasa browned up, crisped up a little bit. And then we're gonna do a little mirepoix, but we also added some red bell pepper, so it's kind of like a Cajun one. Onion, celery, carrot, red bell pepper going in. Camp Chef Wood One Pellet Grill, absolutely love this thing. And there's actually a secret surprise inside. We got the bigger model of this one. Um, just haven't brought it out yet, but. We got the grill to 400 degrees and I'm just gonna leave them on the sheet pan. I would normally like to put fish directly on the grill grates, but I've never cooked, cooked with tilapia before, so I don't know how it would fare if it would fall apart on me, so. Staying safe with the sheet pan. Carrots, celery, onion, red pepper, all softened up. A couple of tomatoes. And the cool thing about succotash is you can kind of just add whatever you want. You got a bunch of leftover vegetables. As long as they complement each other, add them in. These were leftover tomatoes from the other day. Mm. And if you want it, not soupy, but if you want it to have a little broth, you can add some chicken stock, or if you want it more savory, you can add some cream. So we're gonna add a little salt and pepper to our succotash. Pepper. We're gonna add some lima beans that I parboiled. And then as well as some corn. So this is our tilapia ceviche. I had it, I took some cilantro, a bunch of lime juice, enough to cover the fish, some honey, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. Blended it up, very similar to what James did with the agua chile. But with agua chile, you put your marinade at the very end, so you don't cook the fish. When you soak your fish in lime juice or citric acid, you're essentially cooking it. If you guys see, this tilapia is cooked without heat, so it's white. Um, it doesn't take long, about 15, 20 minutes in the fridge and it's good to go. So now we're just gonna lay it out on our plate here. That beautiful green color. Tilapia is actually a perfect fish to do for ceviche because it's very firm. Firm fish are best to do with ceviche. Soft flesh fish will fall apart on you. And for ceviche, you can either toss everything through, but I'm gonna do it with all of our veggies right on top of the fish. So it's completely up to you. Okay, now we have some red onion and some, uh, a little red chili pepper. Not traditional, but I'm gonna do a little olive oil drizzle right on top. Finish it off with just a little bit of salt. Suck a tash. It's just different looking, look at that. Bright orange, red tilapia right on top. And finish off with just a little scallion. There you go. Nice, healthy lunch, right? That one will have that one. Look at that suck huh? Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Look at that. I forgot to do this for hers, too. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the way the fish came out. I haven't tasted it yet, but it looks like it's perfectly cooked. Gonna be nice and flaky. It's just a good, healthy little lunch. You got your succotash, your sazon flavor, tilapia, a little chive garnish, and then your olive oil drizzle. Just real simple. And then for dessert, look at that dessert. Some tilapia ceviche. In the ceviche, it stayed nice and firm. 
not muddy whatsoever. I posted the tilapia on my Instagram, at Land Shark Outdoors, if you guys haven't followed me already. And a lot of people like, like, that's disgusting, what are you doing? I think there's nothing wrong with this fish, it's delicious. It's a really popular fish worldwide, and I think a lot of people associate it with the farm raising aspect of it, but wild caught tilapia can't be beat. It was really firm here, but check this out. Cooked on the uh, Camp Chef, it's just super flaky. It came out really delicious. I mean, it's probably the, my favorite freshwater fish I've ever had. How lucky am I? Brookie caught, Brookie cooked us all dinner last night. So I was here last night for a fantastic dinner. Now Victor made us lunch, tilapia on top of this colorful, tasty succotash, and then tilapia ceviche. Yep, you ought to be jealous. This was a great lunch. I'm so happy to come here and have something healthy and delicious. The fish, like everyone said, was very colorful and you could cut it with a spoon. It was so soft and tender. Um, and the ceviche for dessert, uh, delicious. Yeah, for dessert. Yeah, it was great. I'm having ceviche for dessert, that's how good it tastes. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Victor. Yeah. Mama, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I think this tells it all. <laughs> My dish is clear because it was so delicious. It's easy to agree with everyone on this one. The tilapia was a great lunch and um, yeah, it went well with um, that red seasoning and also cooked as ceviche. Um, I'm impressed. I mean, you just can't beat it. Every single dish that he makes, it's funny when we were up north, every single person that we met. So is everything you cook really that good? Like literally, that's what everyone asks. And it's true, as long as you know how to cook something, how to clean it properly, how to take care of your fish properly, everything is absolutely delicious. No trash fish, just trash cooks. This was amazing. Good job, Vic. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and also to subscribe. Can I add? <laughs> um. Brooke's right, Victor's dinners have always been good, okay? I've always said they've always been good. But uh, I'm starting to notice that him rubbing elbows with James in his house a few dinners, Victor can just pick up on things. And now you, you can see he's, he's using different techniques and just took him another notch. Amazing, Victor. Thank you. Shout out to James, it definitely rubbed off. <laughs>